I think that I, it won't be a surprise for all of you if I say climate change, we heard climate change, everybody heard about climate change. Is there any person in the audience who have never heard climate change? No, everybody heard about climate change. So what is climate change and how does it express itself? If we look at climate change and how it expresses itself, everybody say mm, global warming. But in reality, it's not just the global warming. I mean, climate change expresses itself through the things which we call climate extremes. In some places, it's becoming, oh God, it's just too hot. In the other places, oh, it just rains like crazy. When is it going to stop? Why we have so much rain? In the other places, you have no rain at all for years. There is no rain. So this is what it is. This is the climate change. And of course, we can look at global temperature. So what it is with global temperature? The global temperature is increasing. So this is an anomaly on the plot of the global temperature. And you can see that some parts of the world already now are three degrees warmer than during pre-industrial times. And we think, yeah, but the, the, the Paris Agreement, we want to be just 1.5 degree above the pre-industrial. Yeah, in July, we already, July 2023, the global average temperature was 1.5 degree above the pre-industrial times. So we are actually getting there and we're getting there pretty fast. So you start thinking like, okay, so there is a problem. We do realize there is a problem. So what do we do about the problem? Well, if you have a problem, if you're getting sick, you, you go to the doctor and you do the diagnosis, right? You want to know what it is, what it is, what happening with my body, why, why it's so bad. So the same is with climate. Do we know what is, what is actually the driver of climate change? Why is it changing? Why it is not staying as it's been there? Like for many, many years and thousands of years. So what are the drivers? And we can look at the scientific evidences. What are the drivers of climate change? So on this plot, you can see that this, this is a plot from the recent scientific assessment of the very authorized body, which is called Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. A lot of scientists, thousands of scientists, who are actually looking at what are the drivers of climate change. And interestingly enough, the largest contribution to the observed warming, which is now 1.1 degree above pre-industrial, is coming from the things which are called long-lived greenhouse gases. But not to make it very scientific, I say it's simple. The most important greenhouse gas is CO2. The majority of warming is driven because of this CO2. And you ask immediately, CO2? Where a gut does it come from? What is the CO2 where it comes from? Well, CO2 is a part of our life. We all consist of carbon. It's carbon molecule. Any part of the living substance on this planet is carbon. So where does the carbon come from? Well, we humans took out the carbon from the soil, from the ground, which is a fossilized fuel, fossil fuel, and we burn it. And when we burn it, we take old carbon and make a new carbon in the atmosphere. And this molecule is pretty tricky. It sits there for thousands of years. So as we heard from Christopher, the molecule which was emitted hundreds of years ago, it is still with us. It is still flying in the atmosphere. But luckily enough, not everything stays because otherwise it would be even worse about 25% is taken by the ocean. So when the air mixes at the surface of the ocean with CO2, CO2 is going into the ocean. It dissolves in the ocean and it actually takes up about 25% of what we emit. And another thing which actually helps us is the terrestrial biosphere, the forests. The forests, the, the, the happy forests, they are photosynthesizing. Thanks God, they are photosynthesizing. So the forests are taking 30% of our emissions. And it's only half of what we burned. 
and what we emitted stays in the atmosphere. And this is the heart which is driving the climate change. So, if we wanted to address climate change, you can realize that there are two parts of the equation, right? What we put and what is taken out. So, how can you make the sum smaller? Either you put less, right? Or you take out more. And then you have the positive impact. So, how we are humans doing with putting something in the atmosphere? I even don't want to look at that plot. These are CO2 emissions since 1990. We increased our emissions since 1990 by 63%. We are doing very good. And even at the times when we had COVID, when everybody thought, oh my God, life stood still. I am sitting at home. I am not moving anywhere. I am just sitting here with my computer. Nothing is working. You know what? Nothing is working. Created the reduction in emissions of the whole 5.2%. So even if it felt that life stood still, we only managed to reduce our emissions by 5.2%. And next year, we picked up again. So, yep, we are not doing very well on what we put. So can we do something with what we take out? Can we actually increase what we take out? Uh, yes, we can. We can do it with the technologies, which is called carbon dioxide removal. We can remove CO2 from the atmosphere. And you can do it by different ways. You can use technology. So there was an assessment report, which was produced this year, which looked at how are we doing with the carbon dioxide removal? Can we actually remove more? And this report demonstrated that actually majority of the removal is due to the reforestation and afforestation project. We just put more trees. And just to remind you, by doing so, we actually take up two gigaton of CO2. Yeah, but our emissions are 38. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> not enough. So can, can we actually do something and can we increase the uptakes? And of course, because we are human society, we always think, let's do the market. Market mechanisms, they sort out everything. So let's put market in place. Let's put market mechanisms and do the carbon credits where when somebody cannot reduce emissions or somebody doesn't want to reduce emissions, they can actually buy the carbon credit for somebody doing it for you. So if somebody reduced the emissions, you can say, hey, you consume less. Can I actually, can it be mine? Mm? You reduce and I look good. So that is the market mechanism. So you can actually buy the thing which we call carbon offset from somebody who reduced the emissions. And as we've seen, majority of the projects are related to forestry. And unfortunately, it is related to the forestry which does exist. It's been there before carbon credits, stays there after carbon credits. And what happens is that on this plot, you see the big bubble is, this is the emissions. And as I said, you have about 25% taken up by the ocean, which is minus. You have 25% taken up by the terrestrial biosphere, forests. And then you have 50%, which is remaining in the atmosphere. So let's add economics. Yeah, fantastic. So each emission has the owner, right? I am the owner of the factory, so I can say, voila, that's my emission. Then I want to have an offset. I want to look good, yeah? I promised my stakeholders we will be carbon neutral next year. So what do we do? Mm, I don't want to reduce emissions. Okay, let me buy something. So then I buy the carbon offset, which is actually an existing forest. I was like, hey guys, do you have a forest? Okay, so I buy the carbon offset from existing forest. I make the financial transaction and I feel good. I'm carbon neutral. I'm still emitting, but I'm kind of carbon neutral. And you see that nothing changed on my slide. The net is still the same. It's the same emissions. 
it's the same uptake and I paid one million to felt good. Did I do anything for climate? Mm, probably not. The voluntary market are the two billion dollars market mechanism which does not offer any solution. It's just the appropriation of existing things. And if you wanted to make it work, you need to create the bubble on the uptakes outside of the existing forest. Or you need to manage the forest differently, that it takes up more. But how would you actually prove that it takes up more? You need to measure. And what do you see with measurements? Why do I say you need to measure? Well, the problem is that you may have a forest there, but the forest, it's not IKEA furniture. It's living, it's breathing. And some forests, even being there, may not be taking up CO2. Amazon Pazin is where a lot of carbon credits has been sold. And we have the atmospheric community, which is making the measurements in this Pazin where the aircraft is flying up and down and measuring CO2 directly in the atmosphere. And what has been demonstrated in this project that when you do the analysis that actually there is a source of one gigaton of CO2 in the Amazon basin. It's not taking up CO2. But even if you are smart and you wanted to create new additional forests, there was another report which I wanted to refer here. And that report talks about availability of land. You need to put your forest somewhere majority of land on this planet is occupied and large part of this territory is occupied for the food production. So when you want to put the forest, you will have to compete with the, for the land, with the land which is used for the food production. And if you put all the committed new forests, you go beyond planetary boundaries. Or maybe somebody can plant something on Mars, I don't know. Uh, another issue is that when you put a forest and if you do everything right and you measure everything and you do everything correctly, the forest needs to grow. How carbon credits are sold now? I put the seed, done, I get my credit. <laughs> the plant is not there. It may not even survive the first five years. So actually the plants are starting to take up CO2 after they are 10 plus years old. The current system, does sell the carbon credits 100 years up front. And that's why I think that looking at the carbon credits without quantification and without doing anything about them is not a really good solution. So how do we make this solution good? What should we do? Well, first, we need to think about emission reduction. We need to do it. We, we can do it. We can do it because it's possible. There are ways to do the solutions. And we also need to introduce the physics, the atmosphere, the environment into our economy because it is not there, but we know it should be there. It should be there. You cannot sell the things which you do not measure. And of course, you need to measure what you do. With that, we can ensure that our future generation take right solutions on the best size and actually look and verify exactly what we are doing. And we heard it, we can do it, but we have to do it together. Thank you.